Good morning and welcome to our Daily Word and Prayer. My name is Tom Short. So glad to have you along with us today as we get in the Word of God, talk about it, allow it to transform the way we think, the way we live, the our values, the way we relate to other people. There is so much power in the Word of God. And so many people live their lives depressed, discouraged, downcast, bearing burdens they don't need to bear, walking in a depression they don't need to have. Because, and the answers are found in the Word of God. And we look, we look everywhere else. We look everywhere else. And so often the, the answers are free and simple right here. That's what we offer. I'm so glad you're with me today. There's a lot of discussion that happened, a lot of feedback I got from my message yesterday on a conversation I had with a priest on the plane as I was flying home uh, the, the day before. And I thought I'd follow up a little bit with some confusion that is very popular, very common amongst religious Christians, people who've grown up in the church, and they get confused about this area of the role of good works in our salvation. And sometimes people have too much of an emphasis on good works, and sometimes they don't have enough of an emphasis on good works. Sometimes they rely on them completely. Sometimes they don't rely on them at all. I'm going to explain that in just a moment. Because human beings have a tendency to pendulum swing. We can embrace one thing so strongly, and when our eyes are open to see that that wasn't quite right, it's easy to pendulum swing the whole other way and, and, and also miss out on what's really right. So I want to talk about this. Some of you may know this. I assume some of you do, but it never hurts to hear this because there's a tendency within us to miss out on this important doctrine. So the question is, are good works necessary for salvation? Paul had a problem. The Apostle Paul, as you know, he was originally a very devout Jew. And he persecuted the Christians. And then he came to understand the gospel. He had an experience with Jesus Christ. God humbled him, knocked him off his high horse. And he became an apostle to the Gentiles. And he would go to Gentile cities and preach the gospel. And then there were people who would come in behind him called Judaizers. The Judaizers were people who would say to the Gentiles, a Gentile is a non-Jew, they'd say to the Gentiles, well, now that you believe in Jesus as the Messiah, now you have to keep all, that just lets you become a Jew now. So you have to keep all the Jewish laws. You have to eat the, the, the kosher foods. You have to keep the Jewish festivals. You have to do all these various things. And the initiation rite into Judaism was circumcision. And this is why it would often be talked about, you need to be circumcised. The men would need to be circumcised. Well, Paul would have nothing of this. Paul said, no, the Christian, Jesus did not come just to make everybody a Jew. Jesus came to offer salvation to all people, no matter who you are. The Jews still distinct in certain ways, but God's salvation, God's kingdom belongs to, is now for all people, and we enter in through what's known as the church. And so the question becomes, so Paul would often write his letters addressing these Judaizers. Most of Paul's New Testament epistles have to do with this because the Judaizers were having such an influence on Paul's converts. And Paul would often talk about we're not saved by the works of the law. Now, we want to read the Bible carefully because sometimes this term works or good works, sometimes it refers to the works of the law, such as circumcision or keeping Jewish festivals or eating certain foods or not eating other foods. Sometimes good works just refer to the fact of doing good things, living the Christian life, loving other people, doing good for other people. And we don't want to assume that they always mean the same thing. Paul was definitely against the idea of thinking you had to do the works of the law. But he was not against the idea of saying you need to do good works. The que- and so that's the first distinction we want to make. Read carefully. Don't think you must come under the works of the law. And dare I say, I know our, we take a group to Israel each year that there's not a war or COVID or something going on. Each year that we can, I take a group to Israel. 
and uh, we, we typically travel in February, and um, it's a wonderful experience. Personally, I've really bonded with the land of Israel. I've really, I, I love the, what God is doing there. I feel a, a, a connection there, a deep connection. I've really missed that I did not get there this year, and I just feel in my soul like I need to be there. But some people can bond with Israel so much that now Gentiles who've experienced Israel and experienced uh, what's happened with Messianic Judaism can think that we put ourselves back under some of these religious festivals. I think we ought to understand Passover, which is coming up here in just a week or two. I think we ought to understand Passover, but I don't think we're required to keep Passover. I think we ought to understand what goes on in the Day of Atonement. In the Old Testament, it's in the Bible, but that does not mean we ought to keep it. Jesus is our atoning lamb sacrifice. Jesus is our Passover. And so this, this tendency for Christians to slip back in under Judaism, it's still true today and can still be happening today. And I want to encourage you don't, not to believe for a second that you're justified by the works of the law. On the other hand, does that mean good works at good works don't matter? I would contend not. But let's look at what Paul said here as he wrote, wrote in Romans. He says, For by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified in his sight, for through the law comes the knowledge of sin. And so Paul's real clear. The works of the law, circumcision, keeping festivals, uh, keeping the sacrifice, sacrificing lambs, so on. This is that's not how you're justified. The law brings the knowledge of sin. The law reveals our own lostness. And indeed, there's one thing I shared with that priest the other day. I said, until I read the Bible, I would have said I was a sinner, but I didn't understand what that meant. I didn't really have guilt. I didn't, my conscience was not activated to feel I, was, there was, I had a problem between me and God. I know I'd done things wrong, but I thought, you know, I, sin is a conviction of, of uh, fault against God. Sin means I have a, an awareness of my, my wrongness, but my violation of the law of God. I knew I'd done things I'd gotten in trouble here on earth. I knew I'd, I wasn't always a perfect person, but I didn't have that conviction before God until I read the Scripture and I read the law of God. And then I began to realize, wow, I'm in trouble. I need something to fix me. I didn't know what it was. I found out what it was was Jesus. Paul goes on to talk about that in the next verses here, Romans chapter 3, verses 21 and 22. But now apart from the law, he says, the righteousness of God has been manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all those who believe. See, God's righteousness is vindicated. God's God is vindicated in saving us, and we are vindicated through the blood of Christ, through faith in Jesus Christ. We receive this salvation. God is, God is declared righteous. We're declared righteous. His righteousness is satisfied, shall I say. And, and we are, we're right with God now through faith in Jesus Christ. Not by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. This is important that we realize. However, let's also remember this. <clears throat> Paul says in, in Galatians 2, 21, I do not nullify the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died needlessly. What was going on here? Peter had come down from Jerusalem, and he was amongst these Gentiles, but there were some Jews there as well. And Peter wouldn't eat with the Gentiles. He only hung out with the Jewish believers. And Paul was saying, Paul rebuked Peter for this. He said, you're making a distinction that God no longer makes. The Jews and Gentiles, we're one body, we're one people. And so he was, he was saying, listen, if you say these people are saved, but then you'll only eat kosher food only with the, Gen the Jewish people, and you kind of exclude the, the, the uh, Gentile people, you're nullifying the grace of God. You're kind of saying that, there, that, that this righteousness of the law supersedes the grace of God, it, uh, that there's some super believers, the Jewish believers, the messianic believers, are in a class of their own. And Peter or Paul would have nothing of it. He said, listen, 
when you do that, you're taking away from the grace of God. You're nullifying it. You're saying that, and, and if you could be saved and become a super Christian, shall we say, without the cross of Christ, then why did Christ die? He died because it's the only way. He gave his life for our salvation. And this is why you must be saved by grace. Anyone who wants to be saved by their good works, Paul says you're under obligation to keep all of them. That just makes sense, doesn't it? Listen, if you, if you get stopped by a, by a policeman for speeding and you go to the judge and you go to the traffic court and you say, I plead innocent, he says, well, you were clocked going 70 in a 30 zone. And he says, yes, but I had a valid driver's license and I had insurance and my seatbelt was on and I stopped at all the stop signs and red lights. And the judge says, well, you're supposed to do all that. You're not being judged here for your, 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 uh, where they had a driver's license. You're being judged for you. You broke the law. You were speeding. The fact you can say you kept five laws and only broke one doesn't make you innocent. You're being judged for having broken the one because you're supposed to keep all. Paul is saying this. If you want to be justified by keeping the law, you got to keep them all. And none of us have done that. Some of us have kept some of the law. Some of us have done better than others. Some of us have sinned less than others, but there's none without sin. There's none who haven't broken the law. There's none who don't have guilt. And therefore, Christ died as the only way for our salvation. And so we must realize this. Some people need a lot of forgiveness. Some people need less. But the only way to eternal life, the only way to be right with God is through being forgiven, declared righteous through the blood of Jesus Christ. He died for all of us, those who need a lot of forgiveness, those who don't need us love much, we all need forgiveness. It's the only way. It's the only way you can be saved. It's sad that some people who haven't sinned nearly as much can look on people who sinned worse and say, well, I'm not that bad, so I don't need this Christianity. Well, they sure do. We all need Jesus, no matter how much, how guilty you are. We're all guilty. But then Paul in Ephesians, he adds this. And this kind of brings the two together because some would say, well, then it doesn't matter if I, uh, good works are unnecessary because I'm not saved by good works, therefore they don't matter. And see, that's pendulum swinging the other way. And some people say, are good works necessary for salvation? And I say, no, but if you ask me, and I don't want to insult you, but it's kind of a dumb question. For me to ask the question, are good works necessary for salvation? It's kind of like asking, uh, once a man and a woman get married, do they need to live together? Do they need to share a life together? Do they need to have the, 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 the you know, uh, I'd say, well, technically no. But if you get married and don't live together, I don't think you understood what you said when you recited your vows and got married. You're saying you intend to live together, have a family. That's why you got married. And likewise, when we come to Jesus Christ, if you say, do I have to do good works? I'd say, well, I mean, technically, no. But do you understand what you're saying? You're on the wrong path. You want to be right with God. You want to please God now. You want to have, you want, you recognize there's a God out there and you failed him and you want to be right with God. And so it's like, it, 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 it's like Mary, what, do you see the metaphor here? And so Paul brings this together in Ephesians 2, 8 through 10, where he says this, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is a gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one will boast. So here's that first part. You're not saved by your works. You're not saved by your works. Just like in a marriage, you're not saved by sharing a house together. You're not married because you share a house together. Plenty of people share a house together and aren't married. You have to have, to be married, you have to have the vows and you have to so forth. But the next verse, he, he goes, you're not, so you're back on grace. You're not saved by your works. You're not saved, you're saved by grace. But he goes on to the very next verse. You're not saved by your works, but we are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. My friends, our salvation, we are not saved by our good works, but we are saved to do good works. 
we're saved to have a relationship with God, of course, but you have been saved to do good works. You are God's workmanship. He has now saved you to be the light of the world. He has saved you to be different, to be an influence. Everywhere we go, we're to be the aroma of Christ. We're to be the light of the world. We're to shine brightly. That's part of why he saved you. Did he save you to go to heaven? Of course. Did he save you because he loves you? Of course. Did he save you to have a relationship with him? Of course. Did he save you to do good works in this world? Of course. Absolutely. Don't ever forget it. And indeed, we will be judged by that. Over and again, over and again, God does say in the book of, in book after book, Jesus says, Revelation, uh, uh, Corinthians, Romans I was reading last night, uh, Matthew chapter 16, he says, we, God, Jesus will return and render to every man according to his works. You and I are to be filled with good works. I pray that today you will be. I pray that today you and I will be known as people who love and serve and do kind things. And, and just wherever, wherever we go, we are an aroma of the love of God, the goodness of God in a dark, dark world where people are depressed, people need to be lifted up. When you leave your house today and when you're in your house, just say, who, whose day can I brighten today? Who can I encourage? Who can I strengthen? Who can I show? Who can I serve? And do it in the name of Jesus, that he might be glorified, and we might be building his kingdom for his glory as we lead others to faith in Christ as well. Amen? Let's pray about this. Father in heaven, we thank you that our salvation is not based on our good works. We thank you that our salvation is based on the good work Jesus Christ accomplished when you died on the cross and rose from the dead. But we thank you also that you have, that we are your workmanship. We have been created by you to do good works. And I pray that today we would be people in a world of depression and discouragement and selfishness, lust, and pride. We would be rise above that. We'd overcome evil with good, and we'd be known as people who are filled with the light of God wherever we go. Oh, we, we need your grace to do this. We're your workmanship. This is not us transform us from the inside out we ask and we pray these things and give you this day in jesus holy name amen amen and amen i don't know about you but i get pretty fired up when i think about this wow god is alive in you and he wants you to shine what an exciting thing so let's put a smile on our face let's put a little pep in our step let's lift up shoulders back today and wherever you go don't just think about yourself or who's irritating you think about how you can be a blessing to others that's how god wants to use you and pray for opportunities to open your mouth and give glory to god and lead people to christ you never know who you might sit next to or who you might stand next to who god can use you in their life so glad you're along with us today if you're new a special welcome i hope you will subscribe to our channel join us every day. We're here live at 8 30 in the morning, or you can watch later in the day. If you can't watch, you can listen on the Apple, Spotify, or Google platforms. And I hope you will tell your friends, post on your social media, put it in your schedule to join us regularly. I love all of you. God bless you. And we'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bye-bye.